What's up YouTube? How does an air suspension system really work? We know just by looking at a car that it's able to go up and down, that much is clear, but we don't know what's actually functioning and making that happen. So the secret sauce is there's an airbag or an air spring, one at each of the four corners. In the case of the front of a vehicle, often you'll have a strut with air over that strut. In the back, you'll have a shock with an air over shock. And that's gonna be what replaces your traditional suspension, which is a coil, as in coil spring, over a damper. So instead of this, you would have something a lot like this. So not only with the air springs are you gonna be able to run a very low aggressive drive height, you'll also have the convenience of on the fly adjustment whenever you want. So what I mean is you might see an obstacle in the road, you'll be able to actually press a button and lift up your vehicle by increasing the pressure in those air springs and that will allow you to get over the obstacle. You won't hurt your front bumper. And after you're done avoiding that, you can press a button and return to your very low ride height. So you go to a meet or a show, you're in a parking lot, you wanna show off that cool aggressive wheel fitment you figured out for your vehicle and you wanna really showcase that, you can deflate the system entirely, which is when all of the air is out of those air springs, your car is as low to the ground as its suspension will allow it to be or its tires will allow it to be. And that's gonna be how you get that incredible look that we're all going for. So what allows your vehicle to do all of this up and down stuff is going to be the ECU and the control system. The control system is what we call the part that manages the flow of air to and from those air springs. Now the basics of that are you're gonna have this air tank that's constantly holding a supply of pressure and that's paired with one or two air compressors. If the tank starts to get lower on pressure, the ECU will actually send a message to the compressors telling them to fire up, make a bunch of noise. They're gonna refill that tank, keeping a constant pressure supply. What that does is the air has to push out of the compressors past a check valve and into the tank. And then the tank is gonna have solenoid valves on the other side of that. And those solenoid valves are there to prevent air from just free flowing from the tank into those four air springs. So the air cannot go back to the compressors because there are check valves. It cannot free flow into your air springs because of those solenoids. So there's gonna be a nylon air line that goes from your tank to your manifold, and then there'll be four nylon air lines going out from that manifold to each of the four corners of your vehicle where those air struts and air shocks are located. Now a manifold is generally made up of eight electric solenoid valves. And the reason there are eight of those, you actually have two groups. You've got four fill valves and four dump valves, and that's for a very good reason. So say your air springs stand totally empty. Again, what stands in the way of all that pressure in your tank just going out there to those air springs and, and adding itself to those air springs is those four fill valves being closed. So when they open up, it's gonna add pressure up until your desired pressure is reached in each of those four corners, and then they close. That's what the four fills are for. Now, because there's a constant high pressure supply on the other side of those four fill valves, they can never be used to remove air pressure from the four air springs. All they can do is allow high pressure in your tank to reach those air springs. If you wanna reduce pressure and thus lower your vehicle, that's why there's the two groups of valves. There's the four fill valves and the four dump valves. You get independent control over everything that way because every corner has dedicated valves, fill and dump. So the dump valve on the other side of the system is actually gonna be venting to the ambient air pressure. So basically no pressure at all. If you open that valve, all the high pressure stored in those air springs is released out through the system and then your system will lower down. Most importantly, what these eight valves allow us to do is to control each corner of the car individually. Now, older systems were more basic than this, sometimes running as few as just four valves. You would have a set of valves for the front and a set of valves for the rear. And when you added pressure, you were adding pressure to both your fronts at the same time and likewise for removing pressure, and then the rear worked the same. If you added pressure, it went to both rears at the same time. Those systems were connected. And while that did a great job of getting the car up and down at a car show, it would not produce the kind of handling characteristics that anyone would want in their car. 
And I say that because what happens with shared pressures side versus side is you go to take a sharp corner and the pressure will actually transfer to the other side of the vehicle. And that's definitely not what we want. So the point is, even if you have no intention of running different pressures in different corners of your vehicle and using full advantage of the independent control, there's still a good reason to have eight valves, which is you wanna isolate those four air springs and be able to run specific pressure in each one. Modern air suspensions are actually built with that in mind, and some bags are actually designed with aggressive driving in mind. Now that we nerded out on solenoids and valves, and I've explained how high pressure air will make its way through various parts of the system and ultimately out when you air out, you may be wondering, how do I control this thing? So the answer to that is a handheld controller that communicates to the ECU. So the controller is something you hold in the palm of your hand, and it's gonna have, in most cases at least, a screen on it that will show you the pressures at each of the four air springs, as well as the pressure in your air tank. And in every case, all of the major manufacturers are also including a free app for iPhone or for Android. And that's gonna completely mimic the controller in case you don't have the controller on you, or in case you wanna be using the controller outside of your vehicle, which can be super handy. Now, anyone highly experienced with AirRide will tell you the number one feature on any of this stuff is the presets feature. A preset allows you to actually reach a determined pressure at any time by pressing just one button. So instead of fiddling around while you're driving, trying to air up for an obstacle, you're gonna do that using a preset. And you do set that up beforehand, which is extremely easy to do. A caveat that pressures and heights are not always the same thing. I'm gonna make an entirely separate video on that here at Bag Riders, and we're gonna walk you through why those are not always equal. So now you understand why every single air suspension system must have a compressor and check valve, it must have a tank to hold pressure, and it has to have a series of valves that will control that airflow to and from your air springs. Got it? Good. We here at Bag Riders strive to make all different videos explaining different parts of air ride to you and answering those questions that you have. So if you have any questions or any thoughts about a video we should make, we would love to hear about it. Me and the team will be happy to make a video that answers that question. Leave a comment below, tell us what you're looking for. I try to answer each and every one of those comments as they come in. If you're shopping for air ride, I urge you to go on bagriders.com and check out our vast selection of goods. And if you're just trying to learn more, bagwriters.com is an amazing resource for you for that as well. Feel free to email sales at bagwriters.com with all your questions or use the handy chat feature on our website, which we do our best to answer Monday through Friday. My name is Will. I'll catch you on the next one.